Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I wanted to do a quick video this morning talking about Elon Musk's post from uh, like 402 this morning. <laughs> so just a few hours ago, as I'm recording this, he said that Tesla is training a new full self-driving model with approximately 10X the parameters and a big improvement to video compression loss, probably ready for public release end of next month if testing goes well. So this is August, so let's call it the end of September. Let's call it the end of October to be realistic about things probably. So we're a few months away from this being released, but this part about the 10X parameters and stuff, I've done videos on that before. If you haven't seen that, definitely check it out up here. I'll repost that and put it at the end of the video as well. The interesting part about this is big improvements to video compression loss. So my question in response to that was, is this compression loss early pre-neural network or mid inside the neural network loss? And there is a twist to all of this, so hold on for a second. The second option is much more interesting from a frontier region research point of view. So compression is you take raw photons in, you take the actual photons that are hitting the sensors and directly transfer those to a neural network or do whatever you want. But for the most part, in fact, the video that you're watching right now is probably H.264 or H.265 compressed. That's a standard compression algorithm that is used for videos. MP3 would be one for audio. What's happening in these compression schemes is that you reduce the file size by throwing away relatively irrelevant data. Now I say relatively irrelevant. For example, MP3s, if you compress them too much, you can definitely hear that they are not full studio quality, you know, WAV or AIF files or anything like that. But if done correctly and listened to in a normal environment, you don't usually notice that kind of a thing and they can be 10 times or more smaller than the original files. So the advantage is that you're 10Xing, you're reducing the size of these files by an order of magnitude. The disadvantage is that you're throwing away information that you cannot retrieve. There are lossless compression algorithms, but they usually don't work particularly well in terms of file size, right? They work great because you can compress something and say make it twice as small as it was before, but then you can reconstruct that original image or audio file or whatever back to its original quality. You can't do that with lossy compression like H.264 or MP3. And again, for the most part, if you, for example, take a phone, you take the cameras here, what you're seeing on the screen or when you take a picture, the picture you actually get has been processed quite a bit. And one of the things that the processing does is it compresses that file down to a size that fits in your memory. If you've ever owned an SLR camera, there is a raw format that you have seen probably. And if you choose that, you'll see the files are substantially larger than a JPEG, which is the other option usually to store things on cameras. But what you get is the original pixels coming off of that camera. So Tesla a couple of years ago switched over from using pre-compressed probably H.264 stuff coming out of the cameras and using the raw image photons that are coming into those cameras instead to actually drive the car. The advantage you get is that you're not getting aliasing and things like that, but more importantly, you can see in the dark basically. These cameras can see a lot better than the processed images show. And by using those raw photons, you're actually getting more data. You're getting much much more nuanced data coming out of these cameras than you would if you were pre-processing it to shove it into a neural network. So when I said pre-neural network down here, that's what I meant by that. And then the mid would be inside the neural network. That is by increasing the parameter count, you can actually reduce the amount of compression necessary. You can think about neural networks as a compression algorithm for reality. It's kind of like our brains. Our brains can't fit all of reality into them. So what they do is they compress that data down to the essential information that you need. You can imagine, of course, though, if you had a 10 times bigger brain, that hypothetically, at least, you would only have to compress the reality of the world one-tenth as much as you currently do in order to interact with it, so therefore it would allow you to be substantially smarter. Now, the part I didn't talk about here is early, mid, and then there is late compression, which is what I didn't think about, but that is that something that Gemma JP and Grok actually had a conversation about, and I find this really intriguing as a possibility, and it raises a significant issue with how Tesla trains their neural networks to drive in reality, and that leads to some really interesting consequences in terms of Tesla's ability to train their robots, both their four-wheeled robots, their cars, and Optimus to function in reality and why compression at this late stage might actually matter a lot. 
So I will leave a link to this reply in the description if you're interested while you're down there. If you don't mind liking the video, that would be awesome. Thank you so much. Anyway, I'll leave a link to it because it's a fairly long discussion, but the upshot of it is that this late stage compression is that you take the raw photons in, you drive, you do things, and then let's say there's an edge case. I disengage or there's an obvious situation where something went wrong and Tesla wants that information. Well, they have to get that information from your car, right? You can't just plug a cable in from your car to the mothership and upload that data for free. You have to compress the data down to some format before you can upload it to the mothership. Even so, it still is multiple gigabytes of data that your car is uploading to the mothership pretty much every day if you drive it. If you ever look at the way your car is using your Wi-Fi when you get home, it taxes it pretty heavily. It uploads a lot of information to the mothership. And of course, the mothership has petabytes and petabytes of data that it's collecting from this fleet of seven or eight plus million vehicles that are out on the road right now. So this late stage compression is post neural network, all this other stuff. Your vehicle would take the information in an edge case or a disengagement or whatever, and it would compress it down, probably using H.264 or H.265. It would then store that information until you got to a Wi-Fi node like at your house, and then it would upload that to the mothership. But here again, you've got a problem of compression because this is lossy compression. You can't reconstruct the original photons from an H.264 compressed video. So both Tesla and us owners rely on compressed video upload because with eight cameras and all of this data that we, they're having to collect, it would just be gigantic. Tesla would not be able to download or store that much information without compressing it because again, you're looking at a 10x plus reduction in the amount of storage space. With H.264, I think it's actually more like on the order of 100x reduction in size. So you need that size reduction, but the problem is that your car is driving on raw photons, right? It's taking in raw photons and it's doing its inferencing about what to do next based on those raw photons. But if you disengage your car and you send that video to Tesla, that is compressed information that is not recoverable. They can't go back to the original source and therefore that causes significant problems with training because you're not training on the same data. If you're inferencing based on raw photons coming in and you're training based on video compressed data, those two things are very, very different and neural networks are not like humans, we would tend to overlook the differences between those two sources because we wouldn't find them significant. We would look at like, oh, there's a person in the in the video and things like that. Instead, a neural network really pays a lot of attention to the noise and to the all the, the sort of distractor elements that are in an image. And so compressing that image fundamentally changes it for a neural network from the uncompressed image. This is something I hadn't really thought about too much until I read this Grok summary. And then I started to think, wait a second, this is actually a significant significant issue for Tesla. So if Tesla is able to reduce or have a big improvement to video compression loss, as Elon said up here, that actually makes a huge potential difference to Tesla's ability to train more accurately on the real world. What does Elon mean by this big improvement in video compression loss? Well, he could be just talking about upping the bit rate of H.264 or H.265 video compression, but I really doubt it. I have a feeling that his engineers in the full self-driving area or Tesla AI have been working on a new video compression algorithm that garners that reduction in file size while at the same time being able to be reconstructed much closer to the original format that the raw photons in that your car would actually see. How are they doing this? I have a feeling that it has to do with neural networks. I have a feeling it's a neural network compression algorithm. Like I said earlier in this video, neural networks are effectively a way of compressing reality. And while it does not reproduce the same thing back out again, it's a lossy compression, it could be tuned such that you could get something very, very indistinguishable or very, very close to the original source. If you train with enough input and output data, which again, Tesla has access to as much as they want, basically, you could train a neural network to do compression very, very efficiently, and then use that neural network backwards to decompress that video back into a format that's almost indistinguishable from the original photons in. And this would will allow Tesla to train at a much, much higher quality. They'll be able to drive at least another factor of 10. In other words, if they're 99.9% .9 accurate in their driving right now, this could actually garner them a 99.99 or a 99.999 type of accuracy. This will have a very large effect because in those edge cases like darkness, light shining directly in you, the sun coming into the windshield and casting all sorts of crazy flares and things like that. In those situations, the difference between between the 
compressed video and the original video is going to be very, very significant. And those I have a feeling are where a lot of the edge case problems are coming from. And I would even go to the extent that horizontal bars, which I have noted is a significant problem for Tesla's, at least in the past, is, you know, like a gate or something that has a horizontal bar down. It tends not to see that. And that has a lot to do with the way neural networks work and has a lot to do with the way scanline cameras work and things like that. But if they can get closer to the original video source and not have compressed video, it will probably allow them to train much better on that type of environment as well. So if Tesla is in fact using a neural network compression algorithm, number one, that's super cool because that's really, really out there at the frontier. But number two, it's going to allow them to train for these crazy edge cases at a much higher degree of reality, much, much closer to the way the inference engine is working in the real world. And that is going to have a huge effect, obviously, on their vehicles, but also on Optimus as well, as it's being trained to interact in reality as well as their vehicles. All right, so those are my thoughts about this. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. Am I way off? Is this not, in fact, what Tesla is doing? I have a suspicion it is. I would love to find out if anybody on the Tesla team wants to talk to me about this in more detail. <laughs> I have a feeling they'll probably be like, sorry, we can't do that, wink, wink. But anyway, if anyone wants to talk to me, you know how to get a hold of me, obviously. I would love to do that. And of course, for the rest of you, if you have thoughts on this, if you think I'm wrong, if you think there's something else that they're doing, definitely let me know. A big thanks to Genma JP for sort of inspiring this by having the conversation with Grok. That was very, very cool. Thank you so much. Thank you all for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe. It really, really helps out the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.